Hi students, have you ever wondered why our parents keep insisting on savings and depositing them with the bank? Or why do they avoid taking credit? The answer to both these questions is interest. Now what is interest? What are the different types of interest? What is simple interest? What is compound interest? And what is the basic difference between these two interests? One by one we shall explore an answer to all these questions. Also. Through some of the solved examples, we will understand these concepts with more clarity and we will also see their applications. So let's begin. Let us take for instance, we have got today 1 rupee and after one year again we have got 1 rupee. Now does this 1 rupee today has the same value after one year? No. These two values are not equal to each other although they are 1 rupee but the values would not be equal and the reason for this is that the future value of the money decreases. 1 rupee today would not be equal to 1 rupee tomorrow because the value of money decreases and this decrease in the value of money leads us to the concept of interest. For instance, let us say that I borrow from my friend 100 rupees today. Now. I got to return him this money because I have borrowed it from him. Now after one year, what is the amount that I got to pay to him? It's not going to be 100 rupees. Why? Because the value of the money has depreciated. If I pay him 100 rupees after one year, he'll be at a loss because there is a decrease in the value of money for one year. And so to compensate for that, what I got to do is I have to pay him an extra amount. So 100 plus some extra amount and this extra amount is actually the interest that I got to pay him because he had lent me that 100 rupees. So the concept of interest comes from the depreciation in the value of money. In this entire chapter we are going to study about interest. Whenever we borrow or whenever we lend there is always an interest and which is the extra amount that is paid or that we receive when we borrow or when we lend. So first of all, let's try to understand what do we mean by the term interest. Interest refers to the fee the lender gets from the borrower. Interest is earned when money is given to someone else to use. For example, if it is deposited with a bank or loaned to an individual or the organization. Interest is the cost of borrowing. So what we can say is interest is the fees that the lender gets from the borrower. Because the value of money depreciates Therefore, the borrower has to pay an extra amount to the lender and this extra amount is known as the interest. Now, interest is earned when the money is given to someone else for use. For example, whenever we deposit some money to the bank, what we have done is we, we have deposited an amount with the bank. So, bank keeps that amount for some time and because it keeps it for some time, that is why it pays an extra interest to the amount we have deposited in the bank. That is why we give so much importance to the saving bank account because whenever we deposit our money in the bank after some years we get an extra amount on the amount that we have deposited with the bank and this extra sum of money is known as interest. Similarly when the bank gives loan to some individual or some organization then it receives some interest on the loan it has given. So interest is actually the cost of borrowing. Whenever I borrow some amount from someone, after some time I have to give an extra amount and this is actually the cost of borrowing. So interest is simply the extra sum of money that is delivered along with the principal amount. In this chapter we are going to study about the two different types of interest and they are the simple interest and the compound interest. One by one we are going to see what is the simple interest and what is compound interest. But before we go into that, let us look at some of the basic terminology that we are going to use in this chapter. The first is principal. What do we mean by principal? And it is the amount of money that is initially borrowed or deposited is called as the principal money, generally denoted by P. So what is the principal? Principal is the amount of money that is initially borrowed or it is deposited and is known as the principal money and most of the times it is denoted by P. So if I borrow 100 rupees at this time from the bank then this 100 rupees is known as the principal and most of the times it is denoted by P. Then comes time. What is time? 
period for which money is deposited or borrowed is called time generally denoted by t or n so whenever we borrow some money we of course borrow it for some time and this time period for which the money is borrowed or it is deposited with the bank is known as the time it is generally denoted by t or n the next is interest now what is interest the extra money that is paid or received for the use of principal after a certain period of time is called as the total interest this we have already seen so interest is the extra money that is paid for the use of principal after a certain period now the total amount is equal to principal plus interest for example if i borrow a principal amount from my friend then after some time i have to return back this principal amount plus the interest that is incurred for this entire period so the total amount that my friend receives is the principal that he has lent plus the interest so amount is always equal to principal plus interest on the similar case if i deposit principal amount with the bank then after some time the bank will give me principal plus the interest and so this entire money the principal plus interest is known as the total amount that i receive from the bank The next is rate of interest. Now, what is rate of interest? It is the rate at which the interest is calculated and is always expressed in terms of percentage, generally denoted by R percent. So, I have been saying you that we get an extra amount along with the principal if we deposit it with the bank, and this is called as the interest. Now, we do not calculate this interest arbitrarily. There is a fixed rule, or there is a fixed rate of interest. that helps us to calculate the interest on a particular sum of money that we have deposited with the bank and so this rate at which the interest is calculated is known as the rate of interest and this is always expressed in terms of percentage and generally this is denoted by r percent so basically we are going to use these terminologies principal rate of interest time and the amount now let's come to the first type of interest which is the simple interest now what is simple interest it is the interest earned on the principal only in other words interest income will be distributed to investors and no further interest will be earned from the interest income the amount borrowed is the principal for the entire period of the borrowing so what is simple interest simple interest is interest earned on the principal only it is not calculated on the interest itself so for example if i say that i have deposited 100 rupees with the bank now after one year let us say that the interest becomes 10 rupees and so the total amount would be 110 but i still keep it with the bank now there are two options either the interest would be calculated on 100 rupees or it would be calculated on 110 because now my amount has become 110 after one year of depositing so in the simple interest case the second interest is calculated on 100 itself so what is simple interest it is earned on the principal only for all the years of depositing we take into consideration only the principal we, we do not take into account the interest income and so what we can say is the principal for the entire period of borrowing remains the same and so the amount borrowed for the entire period remains the same the concept of simple interest becomes more clear when we will study about the compound interest as well then we will be able to draw a line of distinction between simple interest and compound interest but before that let us try to see the formula how the simple interest is calculated on a particular sum of money this formula is given by i equal to p into r into t divided by 100 here i is the interest earned or the simple interest earned p is the principal amount r is the rate and t is the time period so the formula for simple interest is very simple uh, it is principal into rate into time divided by 100 remember rate is always expressed as percentage and time has always got to be in years so if you have been given time in months first convert it into years by dividing it by 12 and then substituting that in this formula gives us the value of interest now simple interest is equal to p into r into t divided by 100 we have just seen amount is equal to principal plus si we have already seen that the total amount earned would be the principal plus the simple interest this gives the value of a as equal to p plus p into r into t divided by 100 or 
if we take p as common we get amount equal to p into 1 plus r into t divided by 100 so this is the formula to calculate the amount simply add the principal to the simple interest and you'll get the amount or you can directly use the formula amount is equal to p into 1 plus rt by 100 there is something very important to note if the annual or yearly rate of interest is r percent then half yearly rate of interest will be r by 2 percent so in most of the cases if we take r as yearly rate of interest that is it is calculated for the entire year but now if we take half yearly rate of interest then that would be r by 2 percent so if i say that the annual rate of interest is 10 percent for a given sum of money then if i calculate it half yearly that is for every six months then for a period of half yearly or for a period of six months that rate of interest would become 10 by 2 which is equal to 5 percent for the first six months and then it will again be 5 percent for the next six months so if the annual rate of interest is r percent then the half yearly rate of interest would be r by 2 percent in the above formula t is in years so we have seen that the formula for simple interest is p into r into t divided by 100 yet t has to be in years if t is given in terms of months then convert it into years by dividing it by 12 we have already talked that t has always got to be in years if it's in months what you got to do is divide it by 12 for example t is given to be 6 months in the problem then 6 months is nothing but equal to half year so put t equal to half in the formula of simple interest and calculate the simple interest let's take an example bozo puts rupees 1000 in the bank for six months at a 10 percent interest rate find how much money he will have in his account at the end of six months so bozo puts 1000 rupees in the bank for six months and the annual rate of interest is 10 percent we have to find out how much money he will have in his account at the end of six months now the time is given in months so we have got to convert it into years so six divided by 12 would give us the years and that is equal to 0 0.5 years now amount is equal to principal plus the simple interest and simple interest is given by the formula p into r into t divided by 100 so substituting the values of p as 1000 t as equal to 0 0.5 r as equal to 10 what do we get we get the amount as equal to rupees 1050 so we can say that bozo will have rupees 1050 at the end of six months he had deposited 1000 rupees and at the end of six months he gets 1050 rupees so here the simple interest is 50 rupees now let's look at the concept of compound interest we have earlier seen what is simple interest now let's look at what is compound interest In simple interest, you earn interest on the principal only. We have earlier seen that in simple interest, we earn interest on the principal amount only. Whereas in compound interest, you reinvest the interest payments and earn interest on the interest amount as well. So what happens in compound interest? The interest payment is reinvested and now the interest is calculated on the interest payment. For example, if I have invested principal P, then after one year let us say that the interest generated is i1 so now the amount would be p plus i1 now this amount p plus i1 is again invested for the second period and so what we can say p plus i1 becomes the principal for the second time period and let us say that again the interest generated is i2 now the amount would be equal to p plus i1 plus i2 and this amount is again reinvested so that you again earn the interest so what you see here is the principal amount keeps on changing initially it was p then after one year it becomes p plus i1 then again it becomes p plus i2 and so on so you see the difference between simple interest and compound interest in simple interest the principal remains the same it is the initial amount that is deposited or it is borrowed but in compound interest what happens is the interest amount along with the principal becomes the principal amount for for the next time period for which interest has to be calculated thus the principal keeps on changing it would really be better if we take some value for p so let us say that you are investing rupees 1000 at 10 percent compound interest so let us say that the rate of interest is 10 percent and the principal amount is rupees 1000 now this 
gives the value of principal, this gives the value of time, and this gives the value of amount. Now the principal is one thousand rupees. The time is one year. So if we calculate the interest on this, that would be equal to one hundred rupees, and so the amount becomes one thousand plus one hundred equal to eleven hundred rupees. So after one year, this principal gives an amount one thousand one hundred rupees. This was the calculation for first year. Now in the second year, what happens is this amount becomes the principal, and now we are going to calculate the interest on this principal, which is one thousand one hundred. Again, for the next year, the interest on this would become one hundred and ten rupees. The principal has changed now, and the amount now would be one thousand one hundred plus hundred and ten, and this becomes one to one zero rupees. So what we see here is, after two years, the amount becomes one thousand two hundred and ten rupees. Now again, this amount becomes the principal for the next year of calculation. So now the principal becomes one thousand two hundred and ten rupees, and again. We are going to find it for one year, and thus it becomes one thousand two hundred and ten plus one twenty one. Now the interest on this amount is one twenty one rupees, and so it becomes one three three one. Thus the amount now becomes one three three one. So you see the difference. After every cycle of one year, the principal changes. The amount at the end of the first year becomes the principal for the calculation for the second year. Similarly. The amount at the end of second year becomes the principal for the third year, and this cycle goes on. So the principal does not remain constant; it changes with every annual cycle. But in the case of simple interest, the principal remains the same. So here you see that after three years, the amount becomes one three three one. What you can say is the total compound interest would be the amount minus principal that is equal to three thirty one rupees. But if I try to calculate the simple interest on this amount, then that would be equal to 1000 into 3 into 10 divided by 100, and that becomes equal to 300. So, in, so in the case of simple interest, what do we get? The interest as rupees 300. But in the case of compound interest, I get it as 331 rupees. Thus, the compound interest is always greater than the simple interest. And so that is the basic difference between simple interest and compound interest. Now let's see the formula how to calculate the compound interest, and that is, A is equal to P into one plus R by hundred to the power of T. Here A is the amount generated, P is the principal, R is the rate of interest, and T is the time period. So the formula for amount is equal to P into one plus R by hundred whole to the power of T. Here P is the principal, R is the rate of interest, T is the time, and A is the amount generated. So we are going to use this formula whenever we are supposed to calculate the compound interest. But this is not the compound interest. This is actually the amount that is generated at T years. So to calculate compound interest, subtract the principal from the amount, and you get the compound interest. The first case is if the interest is compounded annually. We are going to calculate the interest annually. Then, in such a case, the formula is A equal to P into one plus R by hundred to the power of n. Your n is the number of years for which the interest is calculated. P is the principal amount, R is the rate of interest, and A is the amount. So this is the case when compounded annually. The next is the case when compounded half yearly. So we are having two cycles of calculation for every half year. So The time t is divided into two cycles of every six months. Now, in this case, what happens is the rate of interest becomes r by two. So we have earlier seen that whenever we are calculating the interest when it is compounded half yearly, then rate of interest becomes r by two, and the time period now becomes two n. Why? Because there are two cycles of calculations. If we are investing it for one year, then there are two cycles. So the time period now becomes two. If we are investing it for two years, then the number of cycles become four because again we are compounding it or calculating it every half year. So that is why the time period now becomes two n. N is the number of years. So the formula becomes a equal to p into one plus r by two into hundred to the power of two n. So what we have seen here is in the formula replace r by r by two and simply replace n by two n. You simply get the formula for compounding half yearly. The third case is when compounded quarterly. Quarterly, there are four quarters in a year of three months each. 
So in this case, rate of interest becomes R by 4 and the time period now becomes 4N because now there are 4 cycles of calculation. Every year is divided into 4 parts of 3 months each. So what we see, A is equal to P into 1 plus R by 4 into 100 to the power of 4N. Now the time period becomes 4N and the rate of interest becomes R by 4. To understand the distinction between simple interest and compound interest, let's take an example. Let's try to find out the simple interest on rupees 10 for 5 years at 10%. So this column represents the principal, this represents the time, this represents the interest and this represents the amount. For the first year, principal becomes 10, time is 1 year, interest becomes 1 rupee and so the amount becomes 10 plus 1 that is equal to 11. For the second year, the principal remains the same which is 10 rupees, time is 1 year, interest is 1 again because the principal remains the same, rate of interest remains the same and time remains the same. And so the amount becomes 11 plus 1 equal to 12. For the third year, the amount becomes 13 rupees. For the fourth year, the amount becomes 14 rupees. And for the fifth year, the amount becomes 15 rupees. Thus, in this example, we see that the principal remains the same and the interest every year also remains the same, which is equal to 1 rupees. So the total amount now becomes 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 that is equal to 5 rupees. So total interest earned after 5 years is equal to 5 rupees and so the total amount becomes 15 rupees. Here we have taken the principal as 10 rupees, rate of interest as 10% and total number of years equal to 5. Now let's calculate the compound interest on rupees 10 for 5 years at 10%. Now what's the difference? For the first year, principal is 10 rupees, time is 1, interest is the same, 1 rupee and so amount would be 10 plus 1 equal to 11. So what we see here is that the amount is 11 rupees. Now this amount becomes the principal for the second year. So the principal now is 11, time is 1. Now interest on this 11 rupees would be 1.1 rupees and when we add it to this amount, what we get? 11 plus 1.1, that is equal to 12.1 rupees. So the amount after 2 years of compound interest becomes 12.1. Now what we see, this 12.1 rupees becomes the principal for the 3rd year. So 12.1 is the principal for the 3rd year, time is 1 year and now the interest is calculated on this principal amount and that is equal to 1.21 rupees. So principal plus the interest is equal to 12.1 plus 1.21 which is equal to 13.31. So the amount after the third year becomes 13.31. In the case of simple interest, it was 13 rupees. Now this amount becomes the principal for the fourth year. So 13.1 is the principal, time is one year. And now the interest is calculated on this principal amount, 13.31. And thus the interest becomes 1.331. And so the amount is equal to 13.31 plus 1.331, which is equal to 14.641. Again, this becomes a principal for the fifth year and so Again, the interest is calculated on this principle which is equal to 1.4641 and so if we add this to this, we get the total amount and that is equal to 16.1051. Thus, we see that in the case of simple interest, the total amount generated after 5 years is equal to 15 rupees but in this very case, the amount is equal to 16.1051 rupees. So here you see the difference. Of the compound interest is always greater than the simple interest. But there is one more interesting thing to note. The amount in this very case when compound interest is calculated is equal to the amount that is generated when simple interest is taken into account. So for one year, the CI and SI would always be equal to each other. After one year, the difference starts coming in. So just remember, for one year, the compound interest and the simple interest remains the same and they are equal to each other. The difference only comes after the first year because now the amount becomes a principal but in the case of simple interest the principal remains the same. So that's the difference between compound interest and simple interest. I hope this difference is now very clear to you. Now let's understand the rule of 72. What does this rule of 72 says? The rule of 72 shows how long it will take to double your money under compound interest. So this rule of 72 helps us to calculate the time required to double your money under the compound interest. And so it gives us a formula that number of years for money to double is equal to 72 divided by annual interest rate. So the number of years for money to double is equal to 72 divided by annual interest rate. 
For example, if we have the rate of interest as 6%, then the number of years required to double the amount is equal to 12 years because 72 divided by 6 is equal to 12 years. Similarly, if I have the rate of interest as 8%, then the number of years would be 9 years because 72 by 8 is equal to 9. So, this rule of 72 helps us to know the time it would take to double our money under compound interest. But now, there is something important to understand. The rule of 72 is a shortcut to estimate the magic of compound interest that makes your money grow. Remember that the rule of 72 is an approximation and its accuracy reduces as the interest rate becomes high. So this rule of 72 is not an accurate formula, it is just an approximation and it is more accurate when the interest rate is low. Whenever the interest rate is high, then this approximation does not hold true. So you cannot use the rule of 72 whenever the interest rate is high. So always in the case where the interest rate is low, you can use this rule of 72. Now we are going to understand the concept of depreciation. Now what is depreciation? The value of any machine or an article decreases with time due to wear and tear. And this decrease is known as depreciation. So whenever you buy a refrigerator or a car from the market, of course after one year when you would like to sell it, you would get a lesser amount. For example, if you buy a refrigerator at 10,000 rupees today, after one year or after two years, you won't be able to sell it at 10,000 rupees. Its value would depreciate and might be you have to sell it at 7,000 or 8,000 rupees. So what we see is the value of any machine or an article decreases with time and this happens because of the wear and tear and so we depreciate the value of that machine. This process is known as depreciation, the decrease in the value of any article with respect to time. Now there's a formula how to calculate the depreciation. If we say that V0 is the initial value of an article, R% percent per annum is the rate of depreciation. We always define a rate of depreciation and it is almost equivalent to the rate of interest. So R% percent is the rate of depreciation, T is the time period and Vt is the value at the end of T years. Then the formula is Vt is equal to V0 into 1 minus R by 100 to the power of T. Your Vt is the value at the end of t years, V0 is the initial value of the article, R is the rate of depreciation and T is the time period. So this formula helps us to calculate the value of an article at the end of t years if V0 is the initial value of article, R0 is the rate of depreciation, T is the time period and Vt is the value at the end of t years, then Vt is given by the formula V0 into 1 minus R by 100 to the power of t. Now let's see population. Again population follows the trend of compound interest. And how? If population is P and annual increase is R percent, then the population at end of T years would be P into 1 plus R by 100 to the power of T. So if we have a population P and the annual increases R percent, then, then the population at the end of T years is given by P into 1 plus R by 100 to the power of T. It is the same as the formula of amount which we used in compound interest. Always you use the concept of compound interest to know the increase in population of a particular area with respect to time. Now if we say that population is P and the annual decreases R percent, then the population at the end of T years is given by the formula P into 1 minus R by 100 to the power of T. On the other hand, if we say that there is an annual decrease of R percent in the population of a town or a city, then the population at the end of t years is given by p into 1 minus r by 100 to the power of t. Simply replace a positive sign by a negative sign because the population is decreasing. So this is how the population of a town is calculated when we know the rate of increase or decrease, the initial population and the time period for which it is being calculated. So this was a theory about simple and compound interest. Now we are going to solve a few examples on simple interest and compound interest and we are going to see how to solve such problems based on the concept of interest. First of all, we are going to solve a few examples based on the concept of simple interest. So our first problem is, the simple interest on a sum of money is 1 by 9 of the principal 
and the number of years is equal to rate percent per annum. Find the rate percent. So in this brief problem, we have been given that the simple interest is equal to 1 by 9 of the principal amount and also the number of years is equal to the rate percent per annum. We have to find out the rate percent. This is a very simple problem and let us say that the principal year is equal to P, time is equal to T years and the rate is equal to T percent as the time and the rate are the same. So let us assume them to be T. Now the formula of simple interest is P into R into T divided by 100 but also simple interest is equal to 1 ninth of P. So simple interest in this case becomes P by 9. Thus P into T into T divided by 100 is equal to P by 9. P and P gets cancelled and what we get? T square equal to 100 by 9. So we get the value of T square equal to 100 by 9. If we take square root on both sides, what do we get? Now T is equal to 10 by 3 and which is equal to 3, 1 by 3. Now we have to find out the rate percentage which is equal to T. So the rate percent in this case is equal to 3, 1 by 3 percent. Here the time is also equal to T. So time would also be equal to 10 by 3 years. Let's solve the next problem. A lent rupees 600 to B for 2 years and rupees 150 to C for 4 years and received altogether from both rupees 90 as interest. Find the rate of interest, simple interest being calculated. So in this problem it has been given that A lends rupees 600 to B for 2 years and similarly he lends C rupees 150 for 4 years. Now at the end he earns rupees 90 as the simple interest we have to calculate the rate of interest. We are assuming that the rate of interest in both these cases that is A to B and A to C is the same. So let's first try to understand the problem. Let us say that the rate of interest is equal to R percent. So let us assume that the rate of interest is R percent. Now this is A and he lends rupees 600 to P for 2 years. We do not know the rate percent. Similarly A lends rupees 150 for 4 years to C. Now the interest earned is I1. Let us say that the interest earned on this transaction of money is I1 and similarly the interest earned in this transaction is I2 and now I1 plus I2 is the total amount earned which is let us say that equal to A. So I1 in the first case is equal to 600 into R into 2 divided by 100. This is the interest earned in this transaction in which the principal is 600, time is 2 years and R represents the rate percent. And similarly I2 in this case is 150 into R into 4 divided by 100. Total interest would be I1 plus I2 when we add these two terms 600 into R into 2 divided by 100 plus 150 into R to 4 divided by 100 we, we get it as equal to 18R. So the total interest earned is equal to 18R. But given in the problem is that this total interest is equal to 90 rupees. Thus 18R is equal to 90 rupees and from this equation what do we get the value of R? we get the value of R as equal to 5%. So the rate of interest is equal to 5%. Let's solve the next problem and it says that a certain sum of money amounts to rupees 756 in 2 years and rupees 873 in 3.5 years. Find the sum and the rate of interest. So in this problem it has been given that a certain sum of money or the principal amounts to rupees 756 in 2 years and the same amount of money amounts to rupees 873 in 3.5 years. We have to find the sum and the rate of interest. So here in this case we have to find the principal amount and the rate of interest. Let us say that the principal is equal to P and the rate of interest is equal to R percent. So let's assume principal is P and the rate of interest is R percent. Now in the first case the amount is 756. So P plus P into R into 2 divided by 100 is equal to 756. Here the time period is equal to 2 years. So this equation further becomes P into 1 plus 2R divided by 100 equal to 756. And let us say that this is equation number 1. Similarly in the second case for 3.5 years the amount becomes 873. So P plus P into R into 3.5 divided by 100 is equal to 873. This further becomes P into 1 plus 3.5 R divided by 100 equal to 873 and let us say that this is equation number 2. Now divide equation 2 by 1. What do we get? We get 756 plus 756 into 3.5 R divided by 100 equal to 873 plus 873 into 2 R divided by 100. So 
So when we divide equation 2 by 1 and on simplification we get this equation. This equation further becomes 900R divided by 100 is equal to 117 and so we get R as equal to 13%. So the rate of interest in this case comes out to be 13%. Now we are going to use this value of R to get P into 1 plus 2R by 100 equal to 756. This is equation number 1 and when we substitute this value of 13 in this equation what we get? P into 1 plus 26 by 100 is equal to 756. And when we solve this equation what do we get? We get the value of principal amount as equal to rupees 600. So P is equal to rupees 600 and R is equal to 13%. And so just using the concept of simple interest we have solved this very problem. The next problem is rupees 4000 is divided into two parts such that if one part is invested at 3% and the other at 5% the annual interest from both the investments is rupees 144 find each part. Now this is an interesting problem in which we have a total amount 4000 and this total amount is divided into two parts part 1 and part 2. Now if we invest part 1 at 3% rate of interest for one year and if we invest the other part or the second part at 5% rate of interest then the total annual interest comes out to be rupees 144. We have to find out the value of part 1 and the value of part 2. So first of all let's try to understand the problem. We have a total amount of 4000 rupees. Now it is divided into two parts x and 4000 minus x. Now x is deposited at 3% rate of interest and so let us say that i1 is the total interest earned on rupees x at 3% and similarly 4000 minus x is invested at 5% and let us say that i2 is the interest earned on 4000 minus x invested at 5%. Now given that i1 plus i2 is equal to 144 the total annual interest is equal to 144. Now i1 would be equal to 4000 into 3 into x divided by 100 and I2 would be 4000 minus x into 5 divided by 100. So what we get? I1 as x into 3 into 1 divided by 100 and I2 as 4000 minus x into 5 into 1 divided by 100 equal to 144. The total interest is equal to 144. This equation further becomes 3x minus 5x plus 40,000 into 5 equal to 144,000. This equation further becomes 2x equal to 5600 or x equal to 2800. Thus the value of x is equal to 2800 and so what we can say x is equal to 2800 and so 4000 minus x would be equal to 1200. Thus the two parts are 2800 and 1200. So the first part which is equal to x comes out to be equal to 2800 and the second part which is 4000 minus x comes out to be equal to 1200. Let's solve the next problem and it says that Ramesh borrows rupees 7000 from a bank at simple interest. After 3 years he paid rupees 3000 to the bank and at the end of 5 years from the date of borrowing he paid rupees 5450 to the bank to settle the account. Find the rate of interest. So in this very problem it says that Ramesh borrows rupees 7000 from the bank at simple interest. Now after 3 years he paid rupees 3000 to the bank and at the end of 5 years from the date of borrowing he paid rupees 5450 to the bank to settle the account. We have to find the rate of interest. Now let's see how to solve such type of problem. The important thing here is any sum that is paid back to the bank before the last installment is deducted from the principal and not from the interest. So in this problem Ramesh has paid back some amount to the bank. So that amount would be deducted from the principal and not from the interest and thus in this case the total interest would be interest on rupees 7000 for 3 years plus the interest on 7000 minus rupees 3000 which is equal to rupees 4000 for 2 years. Here in this problem he has borrowed it for 3 years so the interest would be calculated on 7000 for 3 years then after 3 years Ramesh has paid back rupees 3000 so the principal now would become 4000 and we have to calculate the interest on rupees 4000 for the remaining 2 years. So total interest would be in this case 3000 plus 5450 minus 7000. Now total interest would be the total amount paid by Ramesh 
minus the principal amount. The total amount paid by Ramesh is equal to 3000. After 3 years plus 5450 he pays at the end. This becomes 8450 and minus the principal gives us the total interest which, which is 1450. So the total interest on the loan is equal to 1450. Now this would be equal to 7000 into 3 into R by 100. The interest on rupees 7000 for 3 years plus this is for 2 years. So 4000 into 2 into R by 100. This becomes 210 R. This becomes 80 R. So when we add them what we get 290 R. So the total interest is equal to 290 R. Also the total interest is equal to 1450. And so we should equate them. Thus we get the value of R as equal to 1450 divided by 290 and which is equal to 5%. So the value of R or the rate of interest comes out to be equal to 5%. So using our logic and the formula for calculating the simple interest, we have solved this complicated problem. Now for more problems on simple interest, log on to our website topcoaching.com. Now we shall solve a few problems on compound interest. The first problem is at what rate percent compounded yearly will rupees 80,000 amount to rupees 88,202 years. Now this is a very simple problem on compound interest in which we have been given that the principal amount is 80,000, amount is 88,200 and the time period is 2 years. We have to calculate the rate percent compounded yearly. So principal is 80,000. Amount is 88,200. Time period is 2 years. What is the rate of interest? We do not know and we have to calculate it. So using the formula what we get? 80,000 into 1 plus R by 100 whole square equal to 88,200. We simply use the formula for amount equal to P into 1 plus R by 100 to the power of N. This further becomes 1 plus R by 100 whole square equal to 88,200 divided by 80,000. This further becomes 441 by 400. And 441 by 400 can be written as 21 by 20 whole square. So what we get? 1 plus R by 100 whole square equal to 21 by 20 whole square. Taking the square root both sides, what do we get? We get 1 plus R by 100 equal to 21 by 20. So R by 100 would be equal to 1 by 20. And so what we get? R equal to 5%. Thus, the rate of interest in this very case comes out to be equal to 5%. So simply using the formula of compound interest, we have solved this problem very easily. The next problem is, a sum of money placed at compound interest doubles itself in 4 years. In how many years? It will amount to 8 times itself. So in this problem, we have been given that a sum of money placed at compound interest doubles itself in 4 years. We have to find out in how many years will the same amount to 8 times itself. Now this is a very interesting problem that appears in many of the objective problems. So let's see the solution. The principal is P, amount is 2P and the time period is 4 years, rate of interest being R. Similarly, let us say that the principal is again the same P but this time the amount becomes 8P. We do not know the time period but rate percent remains the same. So, in the first case, P into 1 plus R by 100 to the power of 4 would be equal to 2P. We have given that in 4 years, the amount becomes double. So, it becomes 2P. This further could be written as 1 plus R by 100 to the power of 4 equal to 2. P and P gets cancelled from both sides. Now, cubing both sides, what do we get? 1 plus R by 100 to the power of 12 is equal to 8. So, if we cube both the sides, what do we get? 1 plus R by 100 to the power of 12 equal to 8. Multiplying both sides by P. Now if we multiply both the sides by P, what do we get? We get P into 1 plus R by 100 to the power of 12 equal to 8P. And this is nothing but the second equation, which is we have to find out the time in which the amount becomes 8 times. So what do we observe here? We observe here that the exponent of 1 plus R by 100 is 12 and the exponent of 1 plus r by 100 is always the time period. So here 12 represents the time in which the amount becomes 8 times its principal. So very easily we have solved this problem. So always in such type of problems that appear in most of the objective problems, use this approach. It will help you to easily calculate the time period. 
Let's solve the next problem and it says that the CI or the compound interest on a certain sum is rupees 104 for 2 years and the SI is rupees 100. What is the rate percent? So in this problem it has been given that the compound interest on a certain sum of money is rupees 104 for 2 years and the simple interest on the same amount is rupees 100. We have to calculate the rate percent. So now how to do that? Let's look at the solution. Now the SI for 2 years would be P into 2 into R divided by 100 and this is equal to 100 given to us in the problem. Let us say that this is equation number 1. Now the compound interest for 2 years would be P into 1 plus R by 100 whole square minus P. So we have taken principal as P, R is the rate percent and for 2 years this is the amount and minus the principal would give us the compound interest for 2 years. Now when we expand this term 1 plus r by 100 whole square we get p into 1 plus r square by 100 square plus 2r by 100 minus 1. Now 1 and 1 gets cancelled and what it becomes p into r square by 100 square plus 2r by 100 and also given to us is that the compound interest for 2 years is equal to 104. So we get 104 equal to p into r square by 100 square plus 2r by 100 and let us say that this is equation number 2. Now if we subtract equation 2 from 1, what do we get? CI minus SI equal to P into R square by 100 square plus 2R by 100 minus P into 2 into R divided by 100. Now here what we see that this term P into 2R by 100 and this term gets cancelled and what we get? P into R square by 100 square. Thus the difference between CI and SI is equal to P into R square by 100 square. You can also note it as a formula. In most of the problems it's asked find the difference between the CI and the SI for 2 years then this difference is given by this formula P into R square by 100 square. Let's solve it further. This difference comes out to be equal to 4 rupees because the CI is equal to 104 and SI is equal to 100 so this difference is equal to 4 which is equal to P into R square by 100 square. But now also we know that from this equation P is equal to 100 square by 2R. If we substitute this value of P in this equation, what do we get? We get 4 equal to 100 square by 2R into R square by 100 square. Thus, the rate of interest becomes R which is equal to 8%. So we get the value of R as equal to 8%. And thus we get the value of rate of interest as equal to 8%. Let's solve the next problem and it says that an amount of money grows up to rupees 4,840 in 2 years and up to rupees 5,324 in 3 years on compound interest. Find the rate percent. So in this very problem it has been given that an amount of money grows up to rupees 4,840 in 2 years. That is the amount becomes 4,840 in 2 years and up to 5,324 in 3 years on compound interest. We have to find out the rate percent. So again principal plus CI for 3 years is equal to rupees 5324 rupees given to us and let us say that this is equation number 1. We have been given that the amount becomes 5324 for certain amount of money after 3 years. So principal plus CI would be equal to 5324 rupees. Now in the first condition it is given that it amounts to rupees 4840 for 2 years. So P plus CI for 2 years is equal to rupees 4840 and let us say that this is equation number 2. Now subtracting 2 from 1 what do we get? We get CI for the third year equal to 5324 minus 4840 and which is equal to rupees 484. So CI for the third year is equal to rupees 484. CI of 3 years minus CI of 2 years would actually be the compound interest for the third year. But CI calculated in the third year which is rupees 484 is basically the amount of interest on the amount generated after two years which is 4840 rupees. Now important thing to notice we have to calculate the CI of third year. Now this CI is actually the interest calculated on this being the principal amount. Here 4840 is the amount generated after two years and we have seen that in the theory that the amount after the end of 2 years would be the principal for the 3rd year. So in this case we know that 
484 is the interest and 4840 is the principal amount now so what do we get we get the rate percent as r equal to 484 into 100 divided by 4840 into 1 which is equal to 10 percent so we get the value of r as equal to 10 percent let's solve one more problem and it says that a man borrows rupees 3000 at 10 percent compound rate of interest at the end of each year he pay back rupees 1000 how much amount should he pay at the end of third year to clear all his dues so in this problem it is given that a man borrows rupees 3000 at the rate of interest is 10 percent now at every end of year he pays back rupees 1000 we have to find out how much amount should he pay at the end of third year so that all his dues are clear so let's look at the solution if a man borrows rupees p at r percent compound interest and pay back rupees a at the end of each year then at the end of nth year he should pay back p into 1 plus r by 100 to the power of n minus a into 1 plus r by 100 to the power of n minus 1 plus 1 plus r by 100 to the power of n minus 2 and so on up to 1 plus r by 100 so this is the formula for such type of problems and this expression a into 1 plus r by 100 to the power of n minus 1 and so on up to 1 plus r by 100 is actually the interest value of the amount he is paying at the end of every year so the total amount he got to pay is the difference of these two terms now here in this case we have p equal to 3000 a equal to 1000 r equal to 10 percent and n equal to 3 years so substituting these values what do we get we get the amount to be paid as 3000 into 1 plus 10 by 100 to the power of 3 minus 1000 into 1 plus 10 by 100 whole square plus 1 plus 10 by 100 now this becomes 3000 into this expression is 1.1 whole cube so 3000 into 1.1 whole cube minus 1000 into this is 1.1 square plus 1.1 so this finally gives us the value as 3993 minus 1210 minus 110 and so the final value that he's got to pay is equal to 1683 so if he pays 1683 rupees at the end of three years then he'll be able to clear all his dues so just remember this formula in case you encounter such type of a problem let's solve one more problem and it says that a sum of money is lent out at compound interest of 20 percent per annum for two years it would fetch rupees 482 more if the interest is compounded half yearly find the sum now in this problem it has been given that a sum of money is lent out at compound interest of 20 percent per annum for two years now if this same sum of money is compounded half yearly then the interest would be 482 rupees more we have to find out the sum the initial amount that is invested so principal is p when compounded annually the compound interest would be p into 1 plus 20 by 100 whole square minus p here 20 is the rate of interest and 2 is a time period it is invested for 2 years so compound interest in this case would be amount minus the principal amount is p into 1 plus 20 by 100 whole square and p is the principal now when it is compounded half yearly then we have the formula ci equal to p into 1 plus 10 by 100 to the power of 4 minus p here now r would be r by 2 so it becomes 10 percent and also we have seen that when it is compounded half yearly t becomes 2n so here the time period now becomes 4 and so ci would be p into 1 plus 10 by 100 to the power of 4 minus p now the difference would be p into 1 plus 10 by 100 to the power of 4 minus p minus this expression which is p into 1 plus 20 by 100 whole square and this becomes plus p so this p and this p gets cancelled and this becomes p into 1.1 to the power of 4 minus 1.2 whole square and it has been given that this difference is equal to rupees 482 so this would be equal to 482 now this could be further written as p into 1.1 whole square minus 1.2 into 1.1 whole square plus 1.2 here we have used the formula that a to the power of 4 minus p square is equal to a square minus p into a square plus p so using this formula we can write this expression in this way this further becomes 
p into 1.21 minus 1.2 into 1.21 plus 1.2 equal to 482. Now 1.21 minus 1.2 is nothing but equal to 0 0.01 and this is nothing but equal to 2.41. So this finally becomes p into 0 0.01 into 2.41 equal to 482 and so we get the value of p as equal to 20,000 rupees. So the principal amount is 20,000 rupees. So just using the concept when the interest is calculated half yearly we have solved this problem. Let's try to solve the other problem. It says that divide rupees 3903 between A and B so that A's share at the end of 7 years may be equal to B's share at the end of 9 years. Compound interest being 4%. So in this problem we have to divide this amount 3903 between A and B so that A's share at the end of 7 years is equal to B's share at the end of 9 years and the rate of interest is 4%. So, the given amount is 3903. It has to be divided between A and B. Now, this amount A is invested at 4% and for 7 years. And let us say that the amount results to A dash. Similarly, this amount B is invested at 4% for 9 years. And let us say that the final amount from this principal amount B becomes B dash. Now, given in the problem that A dash is equal to B dash. So, now A dash would be equal to using the formula of compound interest we get a into 1 plus 4 by 100 to the power of 7 and similarly b dash would be equal to b into 1 plus 4 by 100 to the power of n but a dash is equal to b dash so we are going to equate both these expressions thus the final equation becomes a into 1 plus 4 by 100 to the power of 7 equal to b into 1 plus 4 by 1 plus 4 by 100 to the power of 9 so a by b would be equal to 1 plus 4 by 100 whole square. Now 1 plus 4 by 100 is nothing but equal to 26 by 25 and the square of 26 by 25 is nothing but equal to 676 divided by 625. So the ratio of A and B is 676 divided by 625. Also we know that A plus B is equal to 3903. Now, and so we have to divide 3903 in the ratio of 676 is to 625. So we got to divide the amount 3903 in the ratio of 676 is to 625. And so A's present share would be equal to 676 divided by 676 plus 625 into 3903. And this comes out to be equal to 2028 rupees. So A would be equal to 2028 rupees. And similarly B's present share would be equal to 3903 minus 2028 and that is equal to 1875 rupees. So A's present share is equal to 2028 rupees and B's present share is equal to 1875 rupees. Let's solve the last problem on this chapter which says that find the compound interest on rupees 10,000 for 3 years if the rate of interest is 4% for the first year, 5% for the second year and 6% for the third year. So in this problem we have been given that we have to find the compound interest on the amount 10,000 for 3 years. Now the rate of interest for first year is 4%, the rate of interest for second year is 5% and the rate of interest for the third year is 6%. Note here that the rate percent is not constant. Here in the first year it's 4%, in the second year it's 5% and in the third year it's 6%. So let's see how to solve this kind of a problem. The compound interest on rupees x in t years if the rate of interest is r1 for the first year, r2 for the second year and so on up to rt percent for the tth year and this expression is given by x into 1 plus r1 by 100 into 1 plus r2 by 100 and so on up to 1 plus rt by 100 minus x. So this gives us the value of compound interest on rupees x if the rate of interest is r1 for the first year, r2 for the second year and so on up to rt for the tth year. Now in this problem x is rupees 10,000, r1 is 4%, r2 is 5% and r3 is 6%. So in this weird problem x has a value 10,000, r1 has a value 4%, r2 has a value 5% and r3 has a value 6%. So we get the value of ci that, that is the compound interest equal to 10,000 into we simply substitute these values in this expression to get 1 plus 4 by 100 into 1 plus 5 by 100 and so on up to 1 plus 6 by 100 minus 10,000. This further becomes 
टेन थाउजेंड इंटू ट्वेंटी सिक्स बाई ट्वेंटी फाइव इंटू ट्वेंटी वन बाई ट्वेंटी इंटू फिफ्टी थ्री बाई फिफ्टी माइनस टेन थाउजेंड द वैल्यू ऑफ दिस एक्सप्रेशन कम्स आउट टू बी इलेवन थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड एंड सेवेंटी फाइव पॉइंट टू जीरो माइनस दिस वैल्यू रिमेन्स द सेम टेन थाउजेंड एंड दिस इज नथिंग बट इक्वल टू वन थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड एंड सेवेंटी फाइव पॉइंट टू जीरो रुपीज दस द कंपाउंड इंटरेस्ट इन दिस केस वेर प्रिंसिपल एस टेन थाउजेंड एंड द रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट फॉर द फर्स्ट ईयर एस फोर परसेंट सेकेंड ईयर एस फाइव परसेंट एंड थर्ड ईयर एस सिक्स परसेंट comes out to be equal to 1575.20 rupees and so using the formula we have solved this problem so this was all about our chapter on simple interest and compound interest now this chapter is also very important as far as quantitative aptitude is concerned in most of the competitive exams such type of problems on simple interest and compound interest are very regularly being asked so you cannot ignore this chapter we have discussed all the theory relating to this chapter in this lecture but the key point is you got to practice but for practice you got to have questions so what you can do is you can log on to our site topcoaching.com and there you can find many such questions on simple interest and compound interest in our quantitative aptitude section thank you